I'm Nick Pettit. I'm Jason Seifer. And you're watching The Treehouse Show, your weekly dose of internets where we talk about all things web design, web development, and more. In this episode, we'll be talking about photo gallery plugins, admin UI, font sizing, and more. Let's check it out. First up, we have a plugin called Photo Swipe. Now, this will give you a JavaScript gallery with absolutely no dependencies. And what's great about this is that there are a ton of different controls and it is not a jQuery plugin, so you don't require any different dependencies. Click on an image, hey, look at that. We have a picture with a caption and uh, an author attribution. Oh, it says this is a dummy caption. Yeah. It's that, like it's a, a placeholder. It doesn't mean that the caption is, uh, is, a, is, a, is a dummy. Uh, now, you'll also notice that the, uh, the tools, the navigation tools, disappear after just a moment. And if you look in the top left corner of the screen, it shows which picture in the gallery we are on. This is two out of five. That's a, that's a nice looking forest. What a great view. Uh, so anyway, we can go through all these different captions and it does loop around. We also can zoom if we want to. Whoa, look at that. And then it pans as well. You'll notice that the cursor changes. And this can also go full screen if we really want to. Hey, whoa, look at that. And then we can click this little X and we are back on the page. Now, this is really cool. This also supports touch gestures. So if I were using a touch-enabled device like a mobile telephone, I could perform all of these different gestures like spreading to zoom the image, vertical swiping to close the gallery like the Facebook application, and a ton of different ones, pinching to close and horizontal swipe to switch. Now, this supports the browser history API. So you can see the title bar will change based on where you are in the gallery and you get a unique URL for each gallery item, which means you could link to a specific photo in the gallery. Now, as you expect from anything we include on this show, it is responsive and it has great documentation. So I recommend checking it out. We'll have a link in the show notes right below this video. So great solution if you need a photo gallery plugin. Very cool. Well, next up is Flakes. I love that cereal. Flakes is an open source design and front end framework that serves as a foundation for internal business applications. Now, this is business. Really handy if that's what you're doing, building internal applications for maybe a company you work for or you're doing client work for another company and you're building an application that is just to be used by that company. So let's take a look at a live demo here so you can get a sense of what this looks like. It has a pretty nice aesthetic and I think that's for the most part the major selling point here is that this gives you a good starting point for a professional looking, I don't know, look. So we can go and look at some browsing data here, see what that looks like. We can show what it looks like when you display some information some nice field set labels there. There's adding and editing data. Wow, I feel like I'm doing my taxes. Great, so let's look at the component documentation here. Your taxes have a product description. <laughs> uh, if we look at the simple grid here, you can see that we have a grid system just like you'd expect of any front end framework. We also have some nice typography there's also a few other things like these grid forms. And like I said earlier, they're styled to look businessy. So if that is the look that you're going for, uh, this is pretty, pretty nice. They also have some buttons here and some tables. Anywho, uh, definitely be sure to check this out, especially if this is the type of look you want or you're building internal applications. Really cool framework, really cool kind of focused idea for a framework. I like it. Next up, we have a blog post from Christian Heilman on keeping it simple and coding a carousel. Now, we've talked about different carousel plugins on the show here before. Uh, and let's go ahead and look at the resulting carousel that we're going to build. You can see this is just a little slide right here. And then we have next and previous buttons with some nice transitions. Now, we also have some different options. OK, we have a carousel with different images and different fades. Here's the simplest possible carousel with no transitions. So anyway, as this article goes through, 
he shows you how to build this up from scratch. Now, one of the defining characteristics that he wants to tell you about is keeping this simple. Uh, he says, one of the things that drives me crazy in our modern development world is overcomplicating things. And in the sake of so making something easier to maintain, we add layers and layers of complexity. So in that vein, he goes through and shows us how we're going to build this simple carousel. We start out with just a div and an ordered list, which is going to have list items and the content. From there, we have some basic CSS that he goes through, shows you, OK, this is going to be the content and the list items and just some simple styling. The carousel box is going to be Helvetica and 14 pixels. OK, that comes up with this specific HTML. Then let's go ahead and sprinkle in some CSS. We know that we're going to have a current item inside of our carousel and an active item as well. So here we go ahead and make the different item active and then add the class to it. What does it look like? OK, great. We add this current class. Boom. Good to go. At that point, we need to have JavaScript. So we're interacting with these different items. Let's go ahead and add a div, which is going to be the buttons that we saw earlier. And hey, uh, a button element is actually perfect for that. And then go through, and how does that work? OK, add in the buttons. And we go through, get pretty fancy. Uh, we have a working carousel here. And then he goes through and shows you how to add transitions. Now, I'm not going to walk you through the rest of this article. But suffice it to say, if you want to learn how to build a very simple carousel, just the bare minimum, and then enhance it, go ahead and check out this article. Great commentary and info inside of it. Very nice stuff. Well, next up is a wonderful article on CSS font sizing. And this is pretty basic, but it's a very nice summary and really good overview of all the different options you have when sizing fonts. So on the left side of this table here, we have the units and then the type and then a description of what each one of these does. Now, there's two types of font size units. There's absolute and relative. And of course, absolute fonts will be a very specific size, whereas relative fonts, or relative units, I should say, are going to base their size on other things around it, so other things in that particular context. And it could have a cascading effect as is the case with CSS, cascading style sheets. So let's scroll down here. There's a lot of great other information in this article. But I like the technique that this person uses here it's by setting the font size on their HTML. And then using the rem unit, they can set a relative font size to the base font size on their HTML. And if we scroll back up to that table, that is exactly what it says on rems. So it is actually a root m. So an m is relative to the parent element's font size, whereas a rem is relative to the root m or the HTML element font size. So by setting a font size on the HTML element and then using rems for everything else, you can basically create this cascading effect where you only have to set the font size once. And if you want to maybe adjust the font size for everything on the page, you can just go back to that HTML element and adjust the font size there or adjust on individual uh, elements that are set relative to that. So pretty cool system and really great breakdown of different font size units. Oh, I get it. Breakdown. Good pun, like breakpoints. That's right. Yeah, cool. Sure. That's nice job. Uh, next up, we have a project called medium.js. This is going to let you take control of content editable. Now, in HTML5, declaring an element as content editable allows you to edit that right on the page. And medium.js is going to help you take control of that, just like the name says. So how do you use it? Well, OK, you include some JavaScript in your page, and then have this little script right here, and initialize median, medium, give it an element, and you are good to go. So what does this look like? Here is an inline element that you can edit. Hi, I'm Nick Pettit. And that is content editable. This is now a div on the page. If I inspect the element, you can see it says, hi, I'm Nick Pettit, right there. 
and boom, this is still a div with that content editable set to true. Now, what's really nice about this particular plugin is that you can put HTML templates inside of it. So if we have content editable right here, say hello, hello again, you'll notice that these are all list items that are being created as we go through and edit the page. And we can see even if we look at the HTML, we have new list items. Now, uh, why would you use something like this? Well, um, in case you need to have users on your page interacting with it, say you're designing a CMS and allowing them to edit different sections of it, while still maintaining style and having semantic HTML, this would be a great plugin to use. Uh, it doesn't currently have a toolbar like medium.com, the website, but it would be really easy to create your own. And from what I understand, that is in development. And go ahead, go ahead. No. Looked like you were about to. I was just about to wrap things up. Oh, okay, let's let's do that. Well, that is all we have time for this week, apparently. <laughs> I am at Nick RP on Twitter. And I am at Jay Cypher. For more information on anything we talked about, go ahead and check out the show notes below this video. Thanks everybody for watching, and we will see you next week. So difficult. There we go. Look at it out of the corner of your eye, like maintain eye contact. No. No. Still going too far. There we go. Almost. That was solid. That was good. That was solid. One more time. Let's make sure we got it.